Hey everybody, Lee with LG Speed and Custom here, and in this video, we're gonna put my 32 sedan body onto the 32 Ford chassis. So before we can do that, there's a couple things that have to be done first. One, this car has been used as a 32 Ford storage shed for the last couple months. So we're going to have to clean everything out. When I put all this stuff in there, my neighbor did not have the seat container yet. And it was really easy to get stuff in and out. But now, well, I mean, we can just open the doors, I guess. So that's fine. Inside the shop, we need to do a few things as well. The Roadster is going to have to go outside. Aaron's truck's going to have to come off jack stands, and it will probably go where the Roadster is. And the 32 Ford, I haven't worked on it in a while, so it's kind of turned into a workbench. I got a bunch of axle cores laying on the back that need to get dropped. And all the 32 parts, I've just, I've always just kind of had them on this piece of plywood so we'll have to clean this stuff up and get it organized and uh, yeah I'll probably bring the body in with the forklift and set it here and that way we can use the crane system right here to pick the body up and then put the chassis underneath it. Uh, I can't pick the body up with the forklift very well because I need fork extensions to be able to go all the way through and I don't have fork extensions, so the only other way to pick it up would be to go over top with like ratchet straps and pick it up. But I think I'm gonna run into height issues with uh, our nice decorative lights we have in here. So probably just bring it in on the pallet and then just pick it up with the crane. So let's start moving some stuff. There we go, that worked pretty well. So we've got it centered underneath the chain hoist here. So now we can pick it up. I don't want to just run straps through the windows because I'm concerned when I start to pick it up, they'll just you know slide back. They might not, but they might. So what I'm gonna do is, well, first of all, I gotta show you guys this. This is incredible. This is the main reason I bought this car. Look at all this lumber in here. This entire roof insert is made like there's, you know, there's got to be 10 grand in two by fours here. So I actually bought the car because I wanted to build a deck and I'm going to scavenge all this out. And then I don't know what I'll do with the car after. But I'm just, I'm just kidding, obviously. So I'm going to use these to my advantage though and take these. Oh, let me get out of here. I'm gonna take this strap here and put a wood screw kind of like that into the two by fours. So I'll do that on each corner and then we can pick it up. Surprisingly, I got this window to roll down. 
I didn't think it was going to go. It was pretty not happy about it, but it went. All right, if we take this end here, let me crawl back through the firewall. Man, it's so easy to work on this thing with no firewall in it. And where should we go? Maybe right about there? Why not? Cool. That should work. I'll do that all the way around. All right, let's see if this works. I think it will, because I've done this before. But, okay, I think we need a little more strap on this side. Yeah, something like that. That's gonna work. Hey Lee, how'd you call, how'd you fold your 32 Ford in half? Well, they just don't make two by fours like they used to. Okay, we're gonna pick it up, probably get the forklift out of here for now, and then slide the chassis underneath. It's very nose heavy, which is surprising because there's nothing up here. And in the back, there's like the whole back of the car, obviously, and it still has, it's got a steel floor in the back, nothing up front. So, I don't know, whatever, it's fine. So for everybody that watched the last video when we went shopping in Port Angeles and I bought this stuff, this is terrible. This tastes like cough syrup, exactly like cough syrup. Wow, I forgot how cool this car was. I'm so stoked to see the body back on there. Unfortunately, this is just temporary, which is really hard for me because when I see it like this, like I just wanna you know, plumb a fuel line and brakes and throw a battery in it and let's go do donuts, like screw finishing it. It's done, it's done, let's go drive it. But we can't. So the whole reason the body is on right now is it's, this is just a temporary thing. We need to finish welding the rear suspension. But before we welded it, I want to put the body on which we've just done, to make sure that this wheel is in the right spot. So if you'll remember the very first video on this car when we bought this car, this front or this rear axle was like six inches too far ahead. So I've moved it back to where it's supposed to sit on the 36 Ford wishbones with the correct spring in there. And I mean, I think it looks okay. That looks pretty cool. But does it need to go a little bit further back? I don't know. So, I went and dug out one of the fenders for this car and we'll test fit this fender and see how the wheel fits in the fender arch. Which brings me to a whole nother thing on this car. Do I put fenders on it? Do I run it fenderless? I don't know, this is like the hardest decision I've ever had. Uh, I've always wanted a full fendered sedan and I mean here's a sedan and I have all the fenders for it but at the same time I mean this looks so cool and I'll see pictures of like Diana Branch's car and be like 
maybe I should channel it. That'd be really cool. So, I don't know. At this point, I do not know. Let me know what you would do. Full fendered for like, I mean, for the, the era that I want to build this car, like late 50s, early 60s, full fenders, that was the style at the time. I think mostly because fenderless cars were, were not, like it was illegal to have a fenderless car on the road then. So I kind of want to like keep the fenders on just to keep with that era. But I mean, this looks so much cool and it'd be so much less work to not have the fenders. I mean, these fenders, they're not terrible. But I mean, every fender's got its little, has its issues. At this point though, like I don't even care about that. I just want to drive the car. So, let me know what you would do. Fenderless, no fenders. And while you're typing that out in the comments, I'm going to bolt this fender on. Mm-hmm. See that? See this? You know, I had a feeling it had to go further back. That's why I didn't want to weld it until I fit the body is because I just, there were so many contradictions. I'd measure it in one spot and it would all check out good. It'd be great. And then I'd measure the actual wheelbase and be like, ah, I don't know, that doesn't quite work right. And then I'd talk to other people and be like, oh no, it's, it's fine, it should be fine. So always mock stuff up. That's the, the lesson here. Um, thankfully, at this point, this is not a huge deal to fix at all. Uh, the brackets on the rear end. I just have to make new ones that move the axle back another inch, which is not hard to do at all. And because it's only tacked, you know, just smack them with a hammer and out they come. Put the new ones in and we can scooch this back. I also have held off on getting the drive shaft made because I, like I said, I just, I had a gut feeling that it wasn't right. There's also another issue that I, totally forgot about and that is that this rear end is too wide to run full fenders uh, when I put the rear end in this is the rear end that was in the car when I bought it and I knew it was too wide but I had completely forgotten about it but what I mean we can probably still use it we don't have to narrow it we can just raise the back of the car up a bit and like I don't care if the wheels poke out the side of the fenders a little bit the tread is all inside it's literally just a sidewall that pokes out and that's not a deal breaker for me give it a little bit of a a hot rod rake as they call it so do i want to mock up a front fender now and see what it looks like or should we just not worry about that and get this axle situated that's my next question should probably put a front fender on just to see, why not? Why, although that might be a pain in the, I don't have the front fender brackets yet. So, I don't know, I don't know what I'll do. Whatever uh, the next scene is gonna be in this video, that's what I decided to do. In the meantime, I'm just gonna sit here for a moment and take it all in. Mm -hmm. Hot rods roll. To fender or not to fender? That is the question. I don't know, as much as cool as this is, to be honest with you, I think this is it. I actually almost kind of like the tire poking out a little bit. You know, it makes it look mean. It makes it look way faster than this completely stock single carburetor flathead really is. 
I thought there was something a little bit weird with this front fender. I thought I was like, oh man, remember in the last video we moved the wheels forward? I was like, they're too far forward now. But I think just because this fender is all gibbled right here, it's like bent up and it's just giving the illusion because I, I went and looked at a couple others and that's kind of where the wheel sits in them. So yeah, I think, I think I'm sold on the fenders. Oh man, this is so exciting. Look at how mean that thing is. I love it. Okay, I think playtime's over now. And we'll blast this thing apart again, back down to the frame and get this axle slid back just the tiniest little bit. <laughs> oh man, I love this so much. So when I say it's no big deal to make a new axle bracket, that's because, I mean, it's really not when you've got a plasma table, which is probably, you know, kind of unfair to you guys that don't have one. But anyways, I just drew up a new bracket, but moved the saddle an inch further back. Shannon came down and we measured the wheelbase and I'm at 105 inches. So by moving this back should get me at 106 inches. So we'll load that into fire control here and cut out a new pair. There we have it. See, I told you guys it wasn't a huge deal to make some new brackets and move that rear end back. <laughs> you guys are probably all yelling at me right now. Still trying to find the hole saw. Trust me, I have cut for, I've been doing this for 20 years now and for 18 and a half years, I cut stuff out with zip discs, grinders, hole saws. So I get it, I know all about it. And there's a reason I bought that is because it's the best tool in the world. All right, Saturday morning. Let's blow this thing apart and move our axle back. All right, so this should be pretty straightforward. Basically, we're just gonna take these brackets out and replace them with this one here, which should move it back a little bit. We might run into a little bit of clearance issues here. We might have to get creative with a hammer and fold that back a little bit, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Uh, I got the angle finder on here for our pinion angle, so when we put this back together, as long as we have that same angle again, we should be good. This should be pretty simple, because like all the, the measuring's already been done. I'll just make a little mark here with a grease pencil on both sides before we take that out. And then we can just fit the brackets back in that same location. So if you're wondering what these are made out of, this is just 3 8 plate, which is what like on a 35 or 36 Ford, that's what it would have been. So it should be plenty sufficient. Well, we got it sitting further back, but like I thought, we got some clearance issues in here. And you know, I remember, I remember somebody in the comments 
when I first put this together saying that that might be an issue. But we can fix that. We'll just warm this area up with the torch and give it a little smack with a hammer. And I mean, the factory kind of did it a bit already, but with this ring gear being offset, we just need to offset this a little further. So shouldn't be a big deal. Those brackets, they, they went in there really nice. That one was a little bit of a fight, just the, these little ears on the 36 wishbones where I think we're just a tiny bit tight. So I had to persuade it with a hammer a little bit, but it's in there. So we'll get that back. Well, I mean, I don't know, maybe we should tack this in first and then it's out of the way. And then we could probably take those U-bolts out and drop that down. And then we got lots of room to swing a hammer. That might be the better way to do it. We're still pretty tight in there. It's a lot better, but it's it's still gonna touch. So I think I'm gonna drop the axle back down again. And that area that I just folded up, I think I'm actually just gonna cut that right out. And it'll give us, you know, just that much more room. We'll make it work, it's gonna work. All right, let's try that. It's close, but it clears. I think maybe when I take this apart to paint everything, I might take a hammer and dimple this cover just a little bit. I wonder how much I can go before it'll start touching the ring gear. There's probably, there's gotta be at least a quarter inch, don't you think? And I mean, it'll also, it'll eventually self clear itself, right? <laughs> probably not, it'll probably wear a hole in that time or rear end cover first, but I don't know, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I think it's gonna work out, I think it'll be okay. Sure close though. I just tightened the spring up and with it tight, like we've got even more clearance now. I can almost get my finger through there. So I'm pretty confident that this will work out. Uh, let's put the wheels back on it and roll it back under the car and see how our wheel lines up now. Back on the ground now, miles of clearance. Yeah, look at that. There we go, that's a lot better. I'm happy with that. So I had a, a little freak out when I first set the body down. I came over here and looked at it and we were way too far back and I was like, oh no, how did this happen? But it turned out I just didn't have the fender bolted on all the way properly. So once I put the rest of the bolts in, it kind of straightened itself out. It's still a little bit tight here compared to the rest. But I think that's got a lot to do with, there's been a repair here. And the body itself has also had a repair there. In fact, I actually can't get this last bolt hole to line up. But we're not worried about that at this particular moment in the build. But I am happy with how it sits in there now. So I lowered the car way too much the tires hit the fenders as we already know so i've got i just grabbed a couple lowering blocks and set them in between the axle and the frame right now and we're high enough that 
it still rolls. So I'm going to use that as my base for that's as low as it can go. And when we pull the body back off, like we can build some bump stops now. And if those are two inch blocks, maybe we'll build like two and a quarter inch bump stops because they're going to have a little bit of give. And that way, if you hit a bump and there's a lot of weight in here and it comes down, it'll hit the bump stops before the tire hits the fender. I wonder if we should go two and a half inch. Maybe we'll go two and a half inch bump stops. I mean, we can always trim them down. Uh, also with that, we're gonna have to raise the spring a lot. I don't know if, I got a 39 Ford front spring in here right now with a reverse eye. Maybe I should just put the rear spring back in like a, you know, like a 36, 35 to 40 Ford rear spring. That might be enough. Or another thing we can do, depending on how high we wanna come, we can just take like a piece of like two by two tubing or whatever and put a, a spacer between the, the top of the spring pack and the cross member to raise it up a bit. I always lower cars too much. I didn't think you could ever lower a car too much, but you can. I mean, obviously without the fenders, it was fine. But with the fenders, I mean, we've got a limit. So, ah, uh, what should we do now? Kind of have to take the body back off, I guess. I don't know if I want to do that right now. I don't know. I'll sit and think about it. Well, I've sat here staring at it for like an hour and I think I'm ready to take the body back off. I'll show you why I've kind of been holding off. As you can see, we got a bunch of stuff in here. It's a, it's a bit crowded right now. And to get the body off, we gotta bring the forklift in. And outside right now, it's kinda, it's kind of not nice out. So I didn't wanna, I don't wanna put my roadster outside in the rain, but it's kinda let up a little bit now. And I mean, it's just a car. It gets wet when I wash it when I do wash it, which isn't very often. So it'll probably be fine. We can't really do anything until we get the body off anyway. So let's take the body off. as soon as I finish putting the roadster in 
it stops raining and the sun's gonna come out. What do you think, puppy dog? You don't care. All right, well, we got the body back outside. The shop is kind of all back together now. So what is next on this? Well, we can take the drive shaft with its new correct measurement over to Ken and he can put it in his drive shaft stretcher and make it longer. Uh, we can weld up these guys now and take this brace out. This was just holding the wishbones together because I didn't trust the tack welds on there underneath the tension of the spring. Uh, I found this bump stop. I got a pair of these bump stops that they look like they will work. They're about the right height. So those can go in and we can put shocks in. Actually, we got to do shocks up front too. I'm not sure what to do for front shocks. I've got some F1 shock mounts. So probably we'll just use those. So I think I'm gonna call this video here. Uh, I hope if there's anything that you guys took away from this video, there's, there's two good things, two lessons from here. One, the importance of mocking it up before you final weld everything, tack it, put it all together, and make sure that everything's gonna work properly. Because when it's only tacked, it's not a huge deal to fix it. Um, if it's fully welded, this would have sucked. The other thing to take away from this is when you're building something totally custom that like this rear end was never supposed to be in this car, these wishbones were never supposed to be in this car, none of this is ever, this wasn't from the factory, this is all custom built basically. And when you're building custom stuff, you know what, sometimes you don't get it on the first try. And if you don't, it's not a big deal. It's only metal, it's only car parts. You just take it apart and you try it again and you just keep doing it until eventually you get it right or close enough. And yeah, it's, you just, you make it work. So anyways, thanks everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, make sure to check out the website, lgspeedcustom.com for an LG Speed and Custom shirt or stickers or parts we've added. We've, uh, Chris Skilling and I, designed a bracket to put an F1 steering box in a Ford Model A chassis. So what do you want? It's not ball time. So that's on the website now. And yeah, thanks to the Rod Iron Haulers and Christian Head from Headlines Pinstriping for the music on this video. And we'll see you on the next one. See you later.